So today we are going to see uh, the coronary circulation and uh, about ischemic heart diseases. So first, what is coronary circulation? As you all know in the cardiovascular system, the main organ that pumps blood into the tissues of the body is the heart. So for the action of the heart, the cardiac muscle has to contract and for that it needs to create force and it needs energy. So the heart muscle itself needs to have a good blood supply to supply oxygen and uh, glucose to the cardiac muscle and for that there is a separate circulatory system called coronary circulation. And today we are going to talk about that and the next important thing is when this coronary circulation is problematic when the heart does not get enough blood then you get disease conditions called ischemic heart diseases so let's look at this first uh, we are going to talk about coronary arteries now you all know that there are mainly two coronary arteries the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery And these are the first two branches of the ascending aorta. So when ascending aorta starts from the left ventricle, it gives rise to these two branches. So now let's look at the right coronary artery first. Right coronary artery starts from right aortic sinus of the ascending aorta. So here it starts. And then it is uh, it starts from the uh, anterior or the front aspect of the ascending aorta. Then it comes and descends like this in between the right atrium and the right ventricle. We call this the coronary sulcus. So it lies in the coronary sulcus. And on its uh, pathway it gives various branches that supply the cardiac muscle. And then you can see these are the branches. Then it turns backwards at the lower margin of the right ventricle. So this is how it looks when you look at the heart from behind. Now it comes from here and then divides into these branches and gives rise to this posterior interventricular branch of the right coronary artery. And this posterior interventricular artery supplies a large amount of the posterior wall of the left ventricle also. Now look at the left coronary artery. It starts from behind uh, of the ascending aorta from the left aortic sinus. Then you can see that it comes behind the pulmonary trunk and then divides into mainly two branches. This is known as the anterior interventricular branch. So it descends like this. And the left coronary artery then continues towards backwards as the circumflex branch. Then when you look from behind, you can see it coming from here. And one important thing is, the right coronary artery 
supply is your SA node and AV node in the conduction system. If you remember, the SA node is the one that generates your heartbeat and uh, control the rhythm of the heartbeat. Okay. So this is how the coronary arteries are in most of the uh, population. We call it right coronary artery dominant system. That is because this posterior interventricular branch of the, uh, the posterior interventricular artery is given by the right coronary artery. But in some people, this branch is given by the left coronary artery. And we call them left coronary artery dominant system. So, as there is an arterial system, there is a venous system to drain deoxygenated blood. And they are uh, formed by these cardiac veins. And these cardiac veins ultimately drain into this, you can see here, thing called coronary sinus, which is in the back of the heart. And then this coronary sinus drain into your right atrium in an opening from uh, via an opening between the inferior vena cava and the right AV orifice. This is how these vessels are formed. So next we will look at uh, what happens when these coronary arteries are blocked. So under that you need to know about uh, uh, something called atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is uh, the deposition of uh, fat in the walls of the arteries. Now this is a no picture of normal artery. Can see in this cross section that the blood can flow without any blockage through this normal artery and in the next picture there is a uh, deposition of fat along the wall of this artery and this is called atherosclerosis and uh, we call this an atherosclerotic plaque it is a deposition of uh, cholesterol so here we have this cholesterol and there is a fibrous cap here so when this happens you can see that your artery is narrow now the blood cannot flow freely through this artery so there is a block here. So what are the factors that contribute to atherosclerosis? And these are a few of the factors. One is hypertension. Hypertension is high blood pressure. And uh, the diabetes mellitus. And habits like smoking. Increased LDL cholesterol, that is, there are two types of main cholesterols. One is HDL and the other one is LDL. So, HDL is the good thing to have and LDL is the bad thing to have. And uh, when a person has, a, uh, has poor dietary habits like increased consumption of fat, <coughs> the LDL cholesterol levels increase. And that can contribute to atherosclerosis. And also genetic factors. If your family members have this, then uh, a person you are at risk. So factors like this contribute to this. And then with atherosclerosis, there is an entity called angina pectoris. So when the artery is narrowed here, The myocardium cannot get enough blood uh, according to its uh, demand. So in 
angina pectoris what happens is at rest the cardiac uh, the muscle uh, does not have to do a lot of work when you are at rest therefore even though this artery is narrowed still you can supply some amount of blood to the myocardium and it is enough but when a person is doing some increased amount of physical activity like in this picture climbing a staircase or walking or running something like that then uh, the body the skeletal muscles are doing lot of work and they need more energy for that the blood amount that oxygen amount uh, their demand is high and to supply that the cardiac muscle and the heart has to pump more and because of this the oxygen demand of the myocardium also increases and now because of the narrowing of these arteries the amount of blood the myocardium gets it's not enough to supply enough oxygen to this myocardium there's an increased demand and uh, the blood is not enough to provide uh, this demand then when you are doing an exercise or uh, something like climbing a staircase because of that then the heart muscle is lacking oxygen and you get this uh, chest pain and this is called angina pectoris but at rest you are okay and the next uh, thing is myocardial infarction uh, also known as heart attacks now look at this picture what happens here is now this is an artery that that's uh, this is a coronary artery which is narrowed because of the atherosclerotic plaque see it's a very damaged artery now what happens here at some point these atherosclerotic plaques can rupture and with the rupture of these uh, the plaques there is exposure of various coagulatory factors and there is uh, aggregation of platelets and these coagulatory factors forming a blood clot here and this artery was also already narrowed and now there's a blood clot completely obstructing the blood flow so now even at rest the cardiac muscle does not get the part that is supplied by this coronary artery is not getting enough blood to for its function and then what happens is slowly the cardiac muscle start dying and this is what happens in a myocardial infarction the part of the uh, myocardium that is supplied by this particular artery that is obstructed dies because of lack of oxygen and other uh, things that are needed for energy and leads to myocardial infarction so the most prominent symptom in myocardial infarction is chest pain so this chest pain is tightening in nature so you feel like something tightening in the middle of your chest and it lasts for a long time it does not disappear with resting and it can be very severe and it can radiate into uh, your left arm and also left side the neck of the neck and also there can be uh, symptoms like this can have nausea increased sweating dizziness and also sometimes shortness of breath difficulty breathing and when the heart muscle dies then it gives rise to these complications which are the cause of death when the heart muscle cannot work then it cannot pump blood and to supply oxygen to the tissues so vital organs like brain and the kidneys they do not get enough blood and uh, the person can even die and also the electrical activity of the heart can change 
and you can have irregularities of the heartbeat and this is known as arrhythmia and when the heart cannot work anymore we call it heart failure therefore when someone has an heart attack or myocardial infarction if he is not immediately uh, managed in an admitted to an hospital these things can occur and even the patient can die so this is basically now ischemic heart diseases atherosclerosis they are very common problems in uh, seen in the population so prevention of this is also very important when it comes to reducing the disease burden for that you need to reduce these risk factors and this can be done by lifestyle modifications that are shown here so what are these one thing is eating healthier so reducing your fat consumption and reducing uh, junk food consumption and uh, limiting your carbohydrate intake eating more vegetables eating more fruits things like that and increasing your level of physical activity and doing regular exercises and cessation of smoking and alcohol consumption then controlling your lipid levels having a good hdl level and uh, lower lowering down the ldl level reducing stress and also if you are diagnosed with a problem like hypertension or increased cholesterol levels then taking medication is proper so these are just a few lifestyle modifications that will prevent these problems occurring like atherosclerosis which leads to angina and myocardial infarction So with that we come to the end of the lesson.